வாழ்க வையகம் வாழ்க வளமுடன் எல்லாம் வல்ல எங்கும் நிறைந்த எல்லாம் அறிந்த இறையொருளை வணங்கி உலக சமுதாய சேவா சங்கத்தின் நிறுவன தந்தை நம் ஆசான் அருட்சந்தருடைய அருளாசிகளை வேண்டி மிக வெற்றிகரமாக நடந்தேறிய நமது கருத்தர்களே என்னுடைய பிரசிடென்சியல் அட்ரஸ் சுருக்கமாக இருக்கும் பிகாஸ் மை ஷார்ட் ஆஃப் லாங்குவேஜ் தத்துவ ஞானி மகர்ஷி ஃபவுண்டட் திஸ் ஆர்கனைசேஷன் த வேர்ல்ட் கம்யூனிட்டி சர்வீஸ் சென்டர் இன் நைன்டீன் The objective of this organization is to achieve world peace through individual peace. This head office in Thiruvanmuyur, Chennai. The main residential training center is at Aliyar, Arutpudu Jodhi Nagar. Vedatri Magarshi Kundalini Yoha and Kaihaba Research Foundation was formed at Aliyar in 1984 by Swamiji Vedatri Magarshi. <coughs> it's, it aims to analyze and bring out the benefits of Kundalini Yoha and Kaihaba so that the society can enjoy the benefits. The research has been strengthened with the help of Bharatiya University as well as by approving WCC Vision Sky Research Center in 2011. A separate directorate, WCC Research and Development Wing was found to associate with different research institutions and to encourage individual projects on sky concepts. Swamji Vedatri Magarshi formulated Simplified Kundalini Yoga of offered it is an education with practices for the uplift of the mankind. It is an education for holistic health, physical, mental, spiritual and social health. In order to offer this value-based education to the public, and to the student community in particular numerous institutions called as temple of consciousness or affiliated to world community service center sky yoga education is taught by over 400 wcc affiliated trusts and 2500 sky sub centers functioning as a spiritual education centers to teach sky yoga 17500 masters both male and female have been trained under world community service center the 17 zones and 19 directorates have been formed and are functioning in tamil nadu and other states the sky yoga activities have been extended to eight other states in india and 23 countries over worldwide more than 2 lakh students have graduated in yoga for human excellence in certification diploma ba bsc ma msc mphil and phd courses the world community service center has developed a special project called for village service project more than 300 villages are adopted and sky yoga is started freely free cost of the village people vedatri magarshi college of yoga has been affiliated to tamil nadu physical education and sports university where bsc msc in yoga for human excellence courses are conducted i am very much happy to appreciate the efforts research and development in organizing this conference science and spirituality doctors scientists and sky professor were very much involved in this conference i am happy that the conferences have motivated the research scholars and also have, have given lot of scientific ideas based on vedatri 
i am very happy to appreciate all the doctors and scientists particularly dr jay prakash from uk professor thomas from sweden dr martin from sweden dr relief from germany dr danasekaran from uk dr mergo from brazil dr sachidanandam from uk professor kishore bakko from england dr jagdishan from chennai and dr mala baskar rao from nimans bangalore dr g sivaraman from chennai dr raghavendra swami from udmalpet and our own doctors dr m v ramendranath dr t t sanmagavel dr sudandar devi dr v m rajasekharan dr santhi and dr u malbari indian and other directors i am very much happy to know that all scholars sky professors and college students are enjoying the benefits of this conference walga vayagam walga valamudan enakku english la pesa varadhu elidhi tha padikkum ana romba success a in the conference nadathadukku nammudaiya director research director la nama nalla yerpaadu pannadadella அவருடைய அட்மினிஸ்ட்ரேட்டிவ் டைரக்டர் குத்தாலிங் அவருக்கு ரொம்ப நான் வாழ்த்து சொல்லப்படுது அதோடு இதை வந்து நல்லா ஒளிபரப்பு செய்து மிக டாக்டர் ஜ இவர் நம்ம ஜானகிராமன் ஐயா அவங்க டீம் அந்த அம்மா எல்லாத்துக்கும் ரொம்ப நான் கூட நினைக்கிறேன் இந்த கான்ஃபரன்ஸுக்கு பிறகு நீங்கள் ஓப்பனாக எல்லாத்துக்குமே போட்டு ரொம்ப சந்தோஷம் ரொம்ப நல்லா பண்ணிருக்கீங்க அருத்தேந்தியோட கனவு விஞ்ஞான உலகத்திற்கு ஆன்மீகம் செல்ல வேண்டும் காஸ் அண்ட் எஃபெக்ட் சிஸ்டம் விஞ்ஞான ரீதியாக மக்களுக்கு நிரூபிக்கப்பட வேண்டும் ஆக அதை நோக்கிய பயணம்தான் என்னுடைய இந்த கான்ஃபரன்ஸ் இது மேலும் தொடர்ந்து அடிக்கடி இது போன்ற கான்ஃபரன்ஸ் நம்ம நடத்த போகிறோம் ஆக இது சக்ஸஸாக நடைபெறுவதற்கு அருட்சந்தியனுடைய அருள் ஆசி அன்பர்களின் ஒத்துழைப்பு மிகவும் எனக்கு மகிழ்ச்சியாக இருக்கிறது அனைவருக்கும் என்னுடைய அன்பான வாழ்த்துக்களை சமர்ப்பித்துக் கொள்கிறேன் நன்றி பிரசிடண்ட் ஐயா மே ஹை ரெக்வஸ்ட் அவர் ஆனரபிள் சீஃப் கெஸ்ட் டாக்டர் சுதா சேஷையன் ஃபார்மர் வைஸ் சான்சலரர் ஆஃப் Tamil Nadu Dr. MGR Medical University to join our president in the dais. Memorable occasion, may I request Dr. M.V. Rabindranath Iyya, Dr. Jaya Prakash Iyya, Dr. K. Pirumal Iyya to join them in the dais. This book is a product of multiple doctors and scientists all over the world. The book will be released by our Honorable President and will be received by our honorable chief guest dr sudha sheshayan occasion is distribution of mementos to our distinguished participants the first memento will be received by dr e jayaprakash from uk
Next, Dr. Martin Schelling from Sweden. Dr. Miomir from Slovenia. Dr. Marco Tarup from Switzerland, Professor Kishore Baku from UK. Next, we have the shawl distribution starting with Dr. G. Sivaraman. Next, Dr. M.B. Rabindranathaya. Dr. K. Pirumal. Dr. Sudan Devi, madam. Dr. Chakadisan. Dr. Jagadisan, Dr. Mallabhaskar Rao, Dr. Raghavendra Swami, Dr. Rajashekaran,
Next we have Arulli the Guru Ayya. Arunni the Sundarajanaya. Arunni the Sundarajanaya. Arunni the Kutalamaya. May invite Miss Catherine Brigitta. And Dr. Premalata. Next is the presentations for the best posters. As you can see in the hall, it's filled with colorful posters. The first prize goes to Miss Anuradha. Second best poster prize goes to Miss Jayanti. Third, Miss Bharati will be receiving the best poster prize. The bookwork was heavily supported by two pillars, Abhita and Mangai. May I request Abhita to reach the dais, please. Now, last but not the least, our President Aya will give memento to our Honorable Chief Guest. Deliver their valedictory address. Shri Guru Bionamaka Varka Vadamudan Respected President of the WCSE Galaxy of Spiritually Oriented scientists and scientifically oriented spiritual people. <clears throat> Delegates and participants in this historic international conference. <clears throat> Members of the WCSC at the various level and friends. Thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity to be with such a galaxy of scientists and scholars and all of you this evening. I am a little overwhelmed with that video presentation. The result of what technology brings in. I am a medical professional and have been with 
the medical department, the Department of Medical Services and Education, since the 1980s. On the other side, I am also a spiritual seeker giving on and off spiritual discourses. And one question that I very often face is this. How is it possible for someone to be operating in two different spheres? Sometimes it goes to a kind of a rhetoric when people ask me, how is it possible to ride two horses at the same time? My answer to all these people who ask me similar questions goes as follows. Be it whichever country you are in, you could be in Sweden, you can be in India, you could be in US, UK, wherever. Have you ever come across in any part of the globe a coin which is only one-sided? Have you ever come across or is it possible to come across a coin which is one-sided? If you cannot have a currency coin which is one-sided, please be rest assured you cannot have science without spirituality or spirituality without science. They are the two sides of the same coin. Very often we tend to think that the two sides of the same coin are opposite to each other. Very unfortunate that we think that they are opposite to each other. They are not opposite to each other. They face opposite sides so that they can complement each other. That is all. If I face you this way, I would not know what's happening behind my back. If I turn round, I would not know what's happening here. But science and spirituality are such complementary companions that they face one side for the sake of the other and try and make a wholesome. I'm doubly happy today that the WCSC has attempted to have the first international conference on areas which need to be linked or at least be explained to people that they are one and the same. It is high time that each one of us realize that science and spirituality are not away from each other. They are not forces which pull away from one another, but are forces which will contribute to the goodness of the humankind. I was also immensely pleased to look at the titles of the various sessions which happened in this two-day conference. 
I was interested to learn that there was a session on epigenetics and spirituality. Of course, the scholar is here and my good friend Dr. Jagadeesan, a pediatric geneticist, is also here. Epigenetics, as many of you would be aware, is an area which we have been talking about for the last two or three decades, but an area which we fail to realize in our everyday lives. The way we live our lives, the way we make unnatural modifications of our lives, the way we meddle with nature, the way we consume things which are not required, would all be making some kind of changes in our genetic mechanism. We do not even know what kind of changes are happening now and how these changes would be modifying the genes of the human community. It will take at least another 50 years, 100 years for people to realize and understand that certain things which have happened at that point of time were all because of what happened now. All because of what has happened now or the way we have meddled with nature. I would not be wrong if I quote from my first hand experience. I'm not here to find fault with anyone. But it's required that we open our eyes to truth. Many of us these days are used to have tiled flooring in our homes, offices and other areas. India or Bharat had always had mud floors or at the most until about two decades ago many of the village homes, many of the rural homes, many of the homes in the small towns had only a kind of a cement flooring. We have now moved away to vitrified tiles all over or even marble or something much more than that. I'm not very aware of all those new things which have come in the market. Maybe my construction friends, construction experts would know all that. Some time ago when I was in a particular institution, I would not want to quote the name of the institution here. When I was part of a particular institution, there was a necessity to construct an animal house. Not a new animal house, but demolish the old one and construct a new one because of certain topographical changes we were making in the campus. The engineer who was responsible for constructing the animal house came up with a plan and sometime during the discussion I had to kind of tell him let's have the old cement flooring. He would not agree with me 
And he said, uh, it's not possible because of the current style of construction. We had very aggressive arguments and uh, the argument went to that extent that he turned around and asked me, Madam, na engineer, ninga engineer. So I had to just keep quiet, but something was irking inside. I kind of told him, sir, I'm still an old fashioned person. I believe in the old school of thought and I would not want vitrified tiles, especially for the animal house. He would not agree and I had to succumb to the kind of scholastic pressure that came. The animal house was constructed. Small animals, there was no problem. They were all put in the small cages or, you know, the chambers. But then the large animals, the big animals, especially sheep, had to be transported and translocated to the new animal house. Believe me, all the kind of arguments that went in favor of the vitrified tiles in the animal house. They said the animals would soil and it's easy to clean up. It's difficult to clean the old kind of flooring. This is easy and all that. But believe me, 15 days, mere 15 days into that space, all my poor sheep developed bow legs. All of them. I had to take up the issue with the engineer, make him break the floor. I carried the iron rod and said, I will break this floor now. Now reconstruct this place. The damage is done. At least let it not worsen. I'm trying to tell this not to find fault with anyone. But just to remind ourselves, at least people of India, people of Bharat would remember that there was a time that we all squatted on the floor, even for eating. And today, there is no house without a dining table. Probably Dr. Jayaprakash would remember, Dr. Jagadeesan would remember, when we were children, dining table was a luxury in every house. Today, there is no single home without a dining table. And many of us have forgotten the regular habit of squatting on the floor. Kalyana Pandila Koda Ipa Kuda Vichis Sapada Podratilla. We have changed our lifestyle. We are not sure as to what all changes would be happening in, our, happening in our DNA mechanism because of all these cumulative effect. Non-DNA interference in the genetic mechanism and the results lead to epigenetics. Now, these are all non-DNA mechanisms. And how many ever things we are doing without any respect to nature, without any care of nature, we are not aware of. Spirituality is that sphere of activity. Call whatever you want as spirituality. But spirituality, please remember, is based on natural way of life and natural force. The scholars here will know our lifestyle changes 
have now led us to the concept of one health and we saw we saw the effect of meddling with nature when covid-19 struck the world fortunately or unfortunately i was heading the medical university of tamil nadu we were into research we identified a vaccine candidate however again a question that used to come to me especially in the initial phases of the pandemic when will this virus disappear that would be the standard question when will this virus go away pardon me my answer to that was another rhetoric where do you expect the virus to go would it go to the moon would it go to jupiter would it go to the andromeda constellation or where will it go where will it go it will be there maybe it will take some time for us to eradicate as we eradicated the rinder pest and the smallpox viruses but then until the scientists are able to eradicate it will stay with us maybe endemic pockets here or there the next question will be will another new virus emerge like this that all depends the way we meddle with nature if you go back and trace the history every time a new virus emerged or a new organism emerged it was when the human kind meddled with nature when did the smallpox virus come in 12000 years ago it was originally a virus which lived in the rodents mankind expanded men required more inhabitation they moved in they entered into places where the rodents were occupying the virus jumped from the rodents to human kind when did dengue virus become a fatal virus again people might remember those days dengue was there but then dengue was usually called a breakbone fever it was not a fatal disease people used to say i had dengue and i had body ache and be done with that sometime in the 1960s sometime between 1920s and 1960s it is thought that the fatal variant of the dengue virus emerged but why did the fatal variant emerge again urbanization entering into animal territories human encroachment into animal areas deforestation all these changes manipulated and the virus became a fatal virus today we fear the mere utterance of the term dengue now try and trace what happened when did marburg come when did hanta come when did all the sars and mers and all those viruses newer variants of the ester year viruses arrive all these arrived when there was some kind of meddling with nature and that is where spirituality needs to be revived revived and revived living in unison with nature spirituality is not 
related to any religion any particular religion however spirituality has one basic dictum live in unison with nature that basic dictum also decides what science is someone here was talking about i think it it was in the video that uh, maharishi was talking about philosophy and science people here i do find lots of professors lots of scholars now please go back and check your certificates dr jagadeesan finished his medicine and then went for his doctoral degree dr jay prakash again finished his medicine and went for you know higher qualifications there could be any number of you who have taken your doctoral in various disciplines it could be english it could be tamil it could be science it could be physics it can be education anything even if you have a doctoral in education you have a doctoral in humanities you have a doctoral in social sciences in tamil literature in english literature in german literature what does your degree say doctor of philosophy it does not say doctor of science okay philosophy and science are not something away from each other have you ever questioned as to why a phd in tamil why should it be phd you say doctoral study but then it's only doctor of philosophy remember what maharishi said philosophy seeks truth science seeks truth spirituality seeks truth that is all that is all seek truth spirituality and science are not different kindly permit me to give one small little example from the spiritual scriptures of bharat many of you here would have heard your grandparents tell you something the grandparents usually say especially in this part of the world that for human beings it's for people on earth it's one year 365 365 or 365 and odd days but you know for the devas in the devaloka it's something different it's one year for us but then it's only one month for the devas and then it's only one day for god all of us have heard this when we are children we hear this and with all or inspired eyes and imagination we go to the grandparent the grandmother or the grandfather please repeat it's one year for us it's only one month for the devas but when we grow a little we start teasing the grandparent enna paati kada udra you're telling us all stories what is this how can it be one year for us and devas how can it be one only one month the bhagavatam shrimad bhagavatam which is one of the script one of the spiritual books of this country talks about time the bhavishyotra puranam also talks about time and in fact forecasts what would happen after some time 
Now, if you take all the information that is there in all these Puranas and scriptures, there could be small variations, but I'm trying to summarize them and give them in one fashion or one pattern. We talk about the Yugas. There are four Yugas and these are cyclical in nature. And we are currently in the Kali Yuga. Right? You all agree that we are in the Kali Yuga? Yes. We are somewhere on 5000 and dot. Kali 5000 and dot. The scriptures tell us Kali Yuga will have 4,32,000 years. 4,32,000 terrestrial years or human years. And the previous yuga was the Dwapara yuga, the yuga of Krishna avatar. And Dwapara will mean two or twice. So Dwapara yuga will have twice the number of years as the Kali yuga. And before that, Treta. Treta is three or thrice. So three times Kali Yuga. And Satya Yuga or the Krita Yuga before that, four times Kali Yuga. Now these four Yugas put together will be called a Maha Yuga or a Chatur Yuga. How much will it be or how many years, how many human years will that be a Maha Yuga? 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, right? 1, measure of 1 is 4,32,000. So, 10 times 43,20,000 years. And the daytime of Brahma, the creator, the daytime, one daytime of Brahma, will be thousand chatur yugas. One chatur yuga we calculated. If you want to calculate for thousand chatur yugas, please go home and calculate. One day time of Brahma is thousand chatur yugas and one night time of Brahma is again thousand chatur yugas. And one year of Brahma will be 360 days of that calculation. One night and one day will make one day and multiply that. And what is the lifetime of one Brahma? 100 years of that kind. 1000 Chaturyugas, one Pahal Purudu, the daytime is the light time. Thousand Chaturyugas, the dark time. Put together one day. 360 days of this kind is one year. 100 years of this kind is Brahma's Ayus or Brahma's lifetime. And Brahma will disappear after his lifetime is over and a new Brahma will come. Now all this will look like what kind of thing being told to us. What kind of stuff? What is all this? But all these will have an undercore to say that this is human year calculation. See, even if we say one day of Brahma, for him it is only one day. For us it is thousand plus thousand Chatur Yugas. So there is some kind of difference there, variation there. This is exactly what the grandmother said. It is, you know, one year for us and for devas it is one month and some kind of thing. Now keep all this on one side. When the 20th century closed, 20th century closed, the entire globe 
on all surveys pointed at one scientist as the scientist of the millennium you remember the name of that scientist everywhere wherever there was a survey people were asked and they all said the scientist of the millennium and that was albert einstein and what did albert einstein say relativity of time time is relative and i do remember bertrand russell's explanation for relativity when einstein was not able to communicate to the common mass and say what exactly relativity meant bertrand russell came up with a very creative explanation there's a lovely book written by russell abc of relativity but russell came with a very comprehensive summary of explaining relativity he said if one is sitting with a girlfriend even one hour becomes one minute but the same person sitting with a grandmother even one minute becomes one year and that is relativity now if i try and equate relativity i am able to understand my grandmother also spoke of relativity of time when she said it's one year for us and one month for devas it was mere expression of the fact that time is relative and today many of us realize it when we set our clocks back when we cross certain areas yes dr jay prakash when you go to uk it's a different time every time we cross the seas there is some kind of a change only thing is many of your android uh, uh, phones don't need you setting it back they have an automatic uh, set back and they pick up the time of that zone dr sanjeevi a famous physician in chennai the then madras dr sanjeevi established the voluntary health services some of you might have heard that name in his memoirs he records when mahatma gandhi was killed in india that fateful day dr sanjeevi was in the united states the news went to us too but then dr sanjeevi would record and say like when he came back to india and he was talking to his children about the death of gandhi they were all surprised because appa how did you know about this death on the morning itself because it was morning time in us when the news went so the children were asking appa gandhi sayandran thana pa setu ponaru anake eppadi pa kaaleli ye theriyum you know that is one proof as to how time is relative and this concept was given in all the spiritual scriptures almost every purana talks about the fact that it's a different time in different areas or lokas time is different in different lokas you and me wonder where is this deva loka we don't have to bother about as to where deva loka is another parallel example how do we calculate time when we say a day on earth how do we calculate someone please tell me how do we calculate the revolution of the earth it revolves around its own axis right 24 hours and when it goes round the sun that becomes one year we all agree to that when the concerned planet rotates around its own axis that becomes one day for the planet the same planet going round the sun because it's part of the solar system that becomes one year that's how we calculate 
and for earth it is 24 hours and 365 point something 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 days now what's the position in the venus what happens on the venus venus takes a longer time to rotate around its axis than the time it takes to go around the sun in other words the venetian day is longer than the venetian year so day and year need not be the way we think we think year is longer day is shorter but then year and day can be different right again relative so these are small examples where spirituality and science have parallel process of thinking of patterning and explaining truth i would just conclude with another tiny example this is not even spirituality this is not even labeled as spirituality in this part of the globe at least in south india there is a specific way we serve food on the plantain leaf right the plantain leaf is laid in front of the person and there is a specific way the the narrow part of the plantain leaf should be to the left of the individual the broader part to be on the right of the individual and specific areas where different items of the food has to be kept and we keep teasing saying what is this only if you keep it here can i eat why not eat from there keep it wherever you want and eat that's a different thing inga vecha tha saapranama ye anga vecha saapramaatingla people there no right these questions are often asked the women folk will know because these questions come from the children but remember most of us are right handed and the placement of the plantain leaf is in such a way that the broader portion is closer to the right side and whatever you need to consume in more quantities larger quantities is kept on this side of the plantain leaf the salt and the pickle are kept there now for those of you who keep giving advices don't take much salt don't take much pickle please imagine sit down on the floor the plantain leaf is laid in front of you and then you'll have to like you know do that to take that salt yembi yembi edukono illa kaiya neeti neeti edukono kai valikum rendu tharava eduthadukapra i don't want pickle i don't want salt because you know you'll have to strain yourself and take it it's not given as an advice it's not given as you know health advice for the century no nothing of that kind it's part of your life it's given as part of your life moderation in anything moderation anything diabetologists will know moderation in anything it's not that don't have it at all but have things in moderation live life in moderation more than that i'll tell you one more scientific fact i know people who are familiar with agriculture are here you've seen the plantain leaf roll out the plantain leaf will roll out modalla marathila pathinga na apdi surun irukum appo apdi roll out aagum when it rolls out it is that portion which is closer to you when you eat or at least you know the portion that you are supposed to keep closer to you is the one that rolls out first it rolls out anti clockwise when it rolls out that portion comes out first and that is the one that gets spread first the rest of it is still partially rolled and again women will know when you pack food in plantain leaves 
you remember if the leaf is still not completely mature what do you do adupula kaatuvinga illa you heat it up you warm it up it becomes a little condensed and thickened so that it can hold the food it will not tear it will hold the food now imagine the portion that rolls out first is exposed to sunlight much more than the portion which is rolled inside so there is a natural condensation there is a natural thickening of that part of the leaf which is kept close to you to hold your rice and you know portions which are more and larger in volume this is a simple thing a very little thing of how to serve food and imagine how much of scientific thinking has gone into it how much of thinking how much of testing how much of trial and error and ultimately consolidating this is how it should be done this cannot even be labeled as spirituality it's part of custom it's part of the system if this simple thing can have so much of scientific thinking imagine all those age old customs which have been brought down in spirituality which of a part of the world how much of scientific thinking would have gone into each of those parameters friends it is this parallelism that i would want you to think about i'm sure this international conference has sowed the seeds of a thinking which will link science and spirituality science comes from the latin root scia scia means knowledge that is why we translated science as arivial and please tell me can you find a place where there is no knowledge can you think of any activity which does not have knowledge maybe certain activities are kind of derogated to that level where knowledge is forgotten but if we are seeking knowledge and that is what arivithiru koil means if we are seeking knowledge we'll be scientific and spiritual too if we are seeking knowledge we'll be both scientific and spiritual and i wish not only the afterthoughts of this conference take us to that blend of science and spirituality but i also wish more and more of such events programs conferences are brought up so that all of us enjoy the benefits of merging science and spirituality all the best and once again thank you very much for a wonderful opportunity அறிவு திருக்கோயில் அறிவியலும் ஆன்மீகமும் ஒன்றுதான் என்பதை உணர்த்துகிற இடம் அறிவு திருக்கோயில் ஆழியாரில் இருக்கிறதுன்னு யார்கிட்டயாவது சொன்னா அந்த அறிவு திருக்கோயில ஆன்மீக எஸ்டாப்ளிஷ்மெண்ட் அப்படின்னு தானே எல்லாரும் நினைப்பாங்க ஆன்மீக எஸ்டாப்ளிஷ்மெண்ட் அறிவை நோக்கி செல்கிறது அதுதான் அறிவியல் என்பதை உணர்ந்து கொள்வோம் வாழ்க வளமுடன் நன்றி வணக்கம்